Hello and welcome back to the studio. I'm excited today to talk you through my drawing process of this little harvest mouse. As you can see, I already have the composition set in. I have one mouse drawn and I'm going to draw his little buddy down here. I already have kind of a key line sketch shown in. I'm going to show you how I did that. Now my key line sketch is very light. It's basically following the bone structure of this mouse and it's kind of helping me to place where he's going to be sitting. So I've got his little snout. It goes down to his the hand and then I'm going to kind of show where the other hand is going to be and then his little booty and his tail. I'm also going to kind of map out where his ear is going to go and this is really just me kind of showing all right where is this mouse going to fit? Is there enough room for him here? You know how is his body going to twist and turn and kind of helps me to get started before I start really going hard with my pencil. As you can see this is very very light thus the tissue paper so you can actually see what I'm doing um, but it's just kind of helping me figure out where everything's placed and kind of composition. Now I'm going to go into part two. This is kind of my second pass where I'm going to go through and add the shapes in. Now you can see how far back my fingers are on my pencil. This is called choking back and it just helps you to draw very lightly. If you have a heavy hand and you find that you scar your paper or just have trouble drawing lightly in general, try moving your fingers back farther on your pencil itself and that will help you a lot. Now right now I'm just kind of blocking in different shapes. So I'm sectioning different things out. So here is the kind of the chin and kind of rounding out the jaw just to make sure that everything is anatomically correct. Now I can already see I'm going to run out of room on this little leaf. So I'm going to need to extend him a little bit here. So I'm just kind of sketching this out, making sure that it doesn't look weird. If it looks weird because my leaf is already in place and I'm happy with it, I'd rather change where the mouse is. But because it looks okay, kind of growing out like just kind of falling out like that. I decided to go ahead and continue with this plan with the mouse. So again, I'm drawing everything in different sections. So I've got kind of a triangle for the arm leading into the foot on the right hand side. And now I'm doing the same thing on the left hand side. There's this little hand showing how the arm will be moving. Then I'm going down and I'm adding this little booty here. I decided I needed to go a little bit higher and then we're placing the foot. Now for this section, I'm sticking really closely to my reference image and I'll have that linked down in the description if you need it. Um, but I really want to kind of focus on my reference image for the first section just because again, I don't normally draw mice. I'm not super familiar with their anatomy and I want to make sure that I'm representing them well. So I'm continuing to work on this and eventually I'll go in a little bit harder with my pencil and I'll start to kind of finalize things, but also adjust things so that it fits my composition rather than perfectly mimicking my reference image. And we'll talk more about that in a second. Since I'm pretty happy with where this is going, I have kind of some shapes, I have my key line. I'm going to take this knitted eraser and just kind of dab some of the extra graphite. This is so that it's not too dark and it's not too distracting, especially as I'm going to be changing some details. Now the great thing about knitted eraser is you can also use it as a kind of a traditional eraser like I just did by pulling it across your paper. And here we go. Now it, see how my fingers moved up the pencil. I'm ready to move in a little bit harder and kind of adjust the drawing to fit my needs. Now I'm going to be kind of adding some texture to represent his fur in this illustration. And if you've seen my how to draw a bumblebee tutorial, I posted that about a year ago now. And I talk a lot about kind of illustrative texture and different ways to do that. Some illustrators, if they're drawing something that's really fuzzy, they will work, you know, they will do it smooth regardless. Some will follow kind of, it'll look like a bottle brush where there's texture everywhere. I'm kind of in the middle. There's not really a right or a wrong way. Just pick one. <laughs> um, you can do a couple of different ways. You can do kind of a mix. I tend to go on the smooth side, but definitely a mix. Um, and you can kind of find a happy medium. This is a stylistic kind of choice. Um, there's not, again, there's not a right or wrong answer, um, but you do want to be consistent throughout your illustration. So you'll see I have kind of the smooth line going from kind of his nose down to his chin area and then as mandible where that corner is, that is where I add a little bit more texture. So here his 
let's see, that's his left arm. You'll see that I'm going to be making a ton of adjustments on this piece um, because I'm not entirely sure how I want it to go. And um, I'm leaving my reference image. So I'm not following it as strictly. I didn't love the way it was kind of positioned and it ended up being a little bit confusing. And so I ended up changing it and adjusting it a little bit. Um, this stage, you want to do this still very lightly. I'm going a little heavy handed so that you can see it on the camera but um, you do want to make sure you're still nice and light for the section while you're kind of making sure everything is nice and detailed. If you know for sure what you're doing, like this section for flowers for me, unless it's a new flower that I haven't drawn before, I'm usually pretty confident I know what I'm doing. Um, but flowers, even though they are living things, they're not the same as drawing something that has um, more complicated anatomy, like a mouse or an animal or a person. All right, kind of finalizing this back section. You see how there's some texture in there, but there's a lot of smooth lines. And again, that is stylistic. Now, if you look at my reference image, you'll notice that his little foot, his little back foot here is flat, but because he's on this curve of the leaf, I wanted to make sure that he curved so it looked like he was sitting on the leaf, not like I just Photoshopped him and plopped him onto the leaf. That is a great way to kind of automatically make a bunch of things that you're using a bunch of different reference images for. Um, you're kind of creating your own composition, making sure that your subject is, you know, like the contours fit his surroundings is the best way to make it look intentional and almost like it was you're copying directly from a photograph and not like you're kind of making this up as you go. You don't want it to look like scrapbooky, like you took a bunch of different elements and put them together. And yeah, there's some aesthetic you know, there's some things that are aesthetically pleasing and it tells a story, but it obviously wasn't originally together. That is exactly what I do not want it to look like. I want it to look like I just captured these little mice in this cute little moment and I decided to draw it. So hopefully that is how it's going to end up going across. Now, I felt like with his hand, his left hand was a little bit too far to the left and almost like he was about to fall over. So I'm going to move it to the right a little bit more. I'm um, picking something out of my needed eraser, sorry. Sometimes I get a little bit of lead stuck in there. Um, and then kind of getting rid of and just moving things around. Now, again, normally because I'm still figuring out what I want, how I want this to go, I would have done this drawing much lighter. But again, I wanted you to be able to see it. So I'm happy enough with where it is that I drew the leaf back in. I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to go. Spoiler alert, I will change it once again um, to give it a little bit more, help it to fit a little bit more with this composition and make it look more like it's being affected by this mouse. Now this is my Tombow Mono Zero eraser. I love this thing. It is a detail eraser, but it has the strength of like a really powerful white eraser. See how I can just really get in there though, those tiny little details because it has this tiny little um, eraser head. So it has this small circumference and I'm really able to get into those tight little details and erase just the pencil mess that I've made already. So if you are, I don't really, I wouldn't say that if this is a necessary tool, but if you have $7 to spare, um, it does make it does make life a lot easier. And it's one of those things that if I were to lose all of my art tools today, I'd order that one pretty quickly. So again, I'm going in with the hand and you'll see that I have kind of the fingers following the contour of this leaf. So how it goes up on the right hand side, I'm making sure that the finger that is on the most, the right hand most side is going up a little bit while the other two are a little bit more horizontal. So that is again, just making sure it looks like he's actually sitting on the contour of this leaf and not like I just copied and pasted him on there. Now this little mouse was, this little mouth on the mouse was a little bit tricky for me because it is a little illustrative. It's not, you know, perfectly um, realistic. Uh, so I was kind of trying to figure out how I wanted to do that because I don't want it to go too far from being a realistic representation of the mouse, but I do want it to have a little bit of personality, a little bit of character that you might not necessarily see in a photograph. Otherwise, I'd just take a picture. <laughs> So 
So still lots of back and forth with my pencil and my eraser to really figure out how I want him to kind of be composed. So I'm pretty happy with how those fingers are going. Um, I like how it looks a little bit more like he's on the leaf now, but I'm still struggling with it. It just doesn't look quite the way I want it to, but we'll get there. If you ever looked at mice fingers, those are interesting little phalanges. So when in doubt, I'm going to go in with this tissue paper because again, if you're working on this on your own, you'll want to do this very lightly, but you won't be able to see what I'm doing if I do it very lightly. So I've decided that I want his chest to be in front of his left arm and hand. So I want it in the foreground. Thus, I want to make sure that um, the arm looks okay as it's kind of being tucked behind. So that way it'll look kind of like he's turning even more. And then I'm adjusting the leaf so that it looks even more like he's putting pressure on it and it is being bent because it is being impacted by the mouse. So just like I want the mouse to follow the contours of the leaf, I want the leaf to look like it is being stepped on by a mouse. <laughs> So make sure that you're thinking about those things when you're working on this illustration. Um, but definitely for the mouse, we're just kind of adding some character and making sure that his body makes sense. So I've got some of the texture on his little chest. I'm working on his hand. I want it to look like he's kind of climbing up this leaf. And here's his friend and looks up and there he is. Again, getting rid of some of those extra lines in there that might be kind of distracting. So now if I had gone through this lightly, this is about when I would be going through and really adding the weight to the line. So it'd be, I'd be going through making everything a little bit darker. That does mean that I would be going through and drawing something again. Um, but to me, I'd rather draw something twice or three times and get it right than do what I'm doing now and kind of trying to fix mistakes because I had gone in very heavily, which again was so that you guys could see what was going on. Um, but it did cause some problems just with my method and my system. working the detail back in there, making sure that all the lines fit. And there you have it. I love how this tulip and the leaf kind of make this subtle heart and just the friendship that is shown here. Um, they kind of represent my twin boys uh, a little bit, even though I guess it could be more of a romantic Valentine piece. But I hope that that tutorial was helpful and that you enjoy creating a cute little harvest mouse and um, that you have a wonderful day. And until next time, happy drawing.